Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Mark Felton. Hurricane video, guys. Tin opener, the first tank buster, Hurricane. Mark Felton Productions, original link to the video, top of the description. If you're new, my name's Connor. Hope you're doing well. Let's learn. If I say the words tank buster, the plane that most A10. immediately comes to mind for most people is the famous American A-10 Thunderbolt II, most commonly known by its nickname, Warthog. I asked you guys, I watched a video on the uh, Warthog, the A-10, and I wondered what, you know, you, you know how you hear the, like, two bur like, burr, burr. That that was bad. That was a bad reenactment. But but I figured it was the first one was the bullets leaving the gun, and then the second sound was the impact on the ground. But I guess it's the first, unless one of you are wrong in the comments. I don't know, but it made sense that the first sound is from the spinning of the barrel. And the second sound is the bullets actually being fired. This beast has been in continual service since 1977 and has proved its worth in combat on many occasions, most notably in the two Gulf Wars. It provides invaluable close air support for ground forces and is lethally effective against enemy armor and vehicles. But it was not the first dedicated tank buster. That and, and it seems like a dumb, a dumber plane than than other planes probably in the in the arsenal of the US in that it's it's a giant machine gun and can drop it seems like it can drop some bombs but there's not it it kind of seems clunky rather than like super high tech Process what, what do I know that forces and is lethally effective against enemy armor and vehicles but it was not the first dedicated tank buster that honor belongs to a British aircraft from World War II, the Hawker Hurricane. She's pretty. First introduced into RAF service in 1937, it was the most numerous British day fighter during the 1940 Battle of Britain, though it was overshadowed in the public consciousness by the Supermarine Spitfire. By the time production ended in 1944, almost 14 and a half thousand hurricanes had been built in many different marks, including the world's first tank busting aircraft. It was in the western desert of North Africa that the idea was conceived of modifying the reliable hurricane into the anti-tank role. Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps and Germany's Italian allies had managed to fight through to Egypt with the aim of capturing and severing the Suez Canal, Britain's lifeline to her far eastern empire. An all-out effort was made by Britain with allied troops from Australia, India, New Zealand. That Tobruk comes to mind. Was that one of the battles? Poland and France to stop Rommel and defeat the Axis in the desert. Tank. The desert was the ideal arena for the tanks. Its flat, open expanses favored speed, maneuverability, and tank gunnery. But its lack of cover also favored air operations. The Allies lacked aircraft with the right armament to take on tanks and other German armored fighting vehicles. The Hurricane fighters in North Africa could strafe troops and shoot up soft skin trucks and field cars. Bombing was often wildly inaccurate and hit and miss affairs. What was needed was an aircraft fitted with anti-tank guns that could swoop in and strafe armor, the same way that ordinary fighters shot up supply columns with machine guns and cannons. 
do they do they end up using anti-aircraft guns? I know we're about to find out, but aren't anti-aircraft guns when they're lowered good anti-tank guns, or am I just completely wrong here? Incredibly, the RAF command wasn't keen on such an aircraft or tactics. Many in the top brass consider that tanks should be defeated by other tanks or ground in place anti-tank guns, artillery or infantry, not fighter planes. But wiser heads prevailed and the Hurricane Mark II was chosen for conversion into the world's first dedicated tank buster, or as the British originally nicknamed them, the Flying Tin Openers. The modified Hurricanes were designated Mark IId, and each aircraft was fitted with two 40mm Vickers S anti-tank cannons. They fired tungsten-tipped shells. The problem of fitting the bulky cannons to the Hurricanes was several. Tungsten. Is that W on the tape periodic table? Isn't that like the... the heaviest metal, which would make sense why you would use it. Firstly, the weight of the guns and their ammunition reduced the aircraft's speed. All right, this might sound stupid. What about diamond-tipped rounds? Or is tungsten stronger? I don't know. Forget it. Forget that. Okay. Each modified Mark IId also carried two Vickers 303 machine guns loaded with tracers for aiming. The modern A-10 tank buster is very heavily armored due to its slow speed, as it is vulnerable to ground fire. The Hurricane 2D faced the same problem. Its reduced speed made it more vulnerable to ground fire and armor was added to protect the cockpit, engine, and radiator. The ammunition carried was very limited. Each 40 millimeter Vickers S-gun had only 15 rounds. Wow. The cannon shells were capable of penetrating the armor of German Panzer III and IVs in the desert, as well as all Italian types. First used at the Battle of El Alamein in 1942, five RAF squadrons flew the type. Now they are within range, and you'll see for the first time this deadly gun in action, truly living up to its name, Tank Buster. Does the speed of the plane contribute a significant amount to the power of the bullet? Probably not that much. Like, what is the speed of the plane compared to the speed of the bullet? Like a tenth? Well, the plane's probably going like... Actually, it's probably not going that fast. Modern passenger planes, I think, reach like 600 miles. No, 500 miles an hour? 500? But I think these ones were a lot slower, even the jets. I I'm sure it wouldn't hurt the power of the bullet. Though tank kills by aircraft should be taken with a pinch of salt, the RAF noted that Hurricane 2Ds destroyed 47 Axis tanks out of 148 actually hit, plus recording the destruction of almost 200 other Axis vehicles. But balanced against this were the losses to the flying tin openers due to ground fire or interception by German aircraft. The 2Ds reduced top speed and maneuverability due to the bulky guns and extra armor led to many hurricane losses. Nonetheless, the flying tin openers paved the way for the tank buster concept, and a newer version, the Mark IV, was further improved with new ammunition, improved armor, and protection for the fuel tanks. Using high explosive ammunition, the Hurricane Mark IV saw extensive use in the Burma campaign, interdicting Japanese vehicles and river traffic. 
In the European theatre, the mantle of tank buster moved from the old Hurricanes to a new generation of ground attack aircraft, primarily the Hawker Typhoon and Tempest, which pioneered the use of air-to-ground rockets and created havoc with German panzer forces during the Battle of Normandy in the summer of 1944. Panzerfaust, like a RPG on a plane? claims of tanks destroyed were wildly inaccurate, the constant presence of these aircraft over the battlefield had a detrimental effect on German morale and the ability of German forces to launch counterattacks or even move around by day. The Hawker Hurricane 2D was the pioneering aircraft in developing the tank buster concept and can be considered the great grandfather of the present day A-10 Warthog. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Good video. Details in the description box below. As you guys can uh, probably tell, I'm not afraid to ask questions that might sound stupid, which a few of these might have. But uh, I'd still love any answers to any of the questions I had, any comments at all. Uh, I hope you guys learned something or can teach me something. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next video. Bye.